Hey, my name is Thomas and this is a short prequel to this video. So first the plan was to do a um, just a review of the Kamlan 21 in one video and then a comparison with uh, the Zonlight 22 and the TT Artisan 23 in a second video. But um, during the shooting it became very apparent that there would be a lot of duplicate content so now it's all going to be in one video uh, the Kamlan review and the comparison with the other two lenses so i hope you're gonna enjoy hey my name is thomas and today i've got the Kamlan 21 mm f 1.8 yet another cool interesting option for a standard wide prime fast prime for your APS-C mirrorless camera so i'm eager to test out this lens and let's have a go Kamlan is one of these brands uh, from China that make very interesting lenses today. Uh, this lens, for example, is only around 150 euros, so it's, it's sort of the same price range as a TT Artisan lens, for example, or the Zonlight 22. Uh, however, I think that Kamlan is not that well known, at least not over here in Germany. I, everyone is talking about TT Artisan, 7 Artisan, no one is talking about Kamlan. Uh, they also make a complete range of APS-C uh, mirrorless uh, lenses and this one is the most wide of them. It's a 21 millimeter, so in full frame terms it's like 32. It's a little bit wider than uh, a typical 35. It's a 1.8 and uh, it's a very sturdy lens. It's pretty heavy built. Um, and it has a astonishing close focusing of like 12 or 13 centimeters, which is also maybe something that stands out. In contrast to uh, TT Artisan 23, for example, this lens looks a bit more uh, classic in the way that the aperture ring sits at the rear of the lens and the focusing is at the front. Uh, the focusing feels very, very well damped uh, has a nice resistance. The aperture also has quite a resistance. It's a click less aperture uh, But then it's kind of hard to turn. Maybe they make it so you don't turn it uh, inadvertently uh, The spacing of the numbers here is very special peculiar 1.8 then we've got 2.0 then 2.4 2.8 and then even 3.2 then 4 and in the end it gets a little bit uh, <laughs> There's only 8 and 16, there is no 11, just as with a TT Artisan, by the way. Uh, what's nice with Kamlan lenses is they all come with a lens suit as standard. It's a plastic lens suit, it doesn't look fancy, but it just gets the job done very well. Uh, last not least, we've got the, of course, no electric contacts. This is a fully manual lens. Um, if you have a camera with IBIS, uh, in-body stabilization, remember to set the focal length of the lens in the camera menu because no electric contacts. The camera won't know the focal length of the lens. And here again, we've got this amazing close focus of 12 centimeters. Measured from here where the sensor sits, this is the symbol for the sensor plane in your camera. From here it will be 12 centimeters to your subject, something like here, almost like a macro. Sharpness, actually this lens is pretty sharp for what it is. I, was, uh, I wasn't expecting that. I did the review of the TT Artisan 23mm f1.4 uh, 
one or two weeks ago. Uh, that lens has an, a little bit of a peculiar sharpness characteristic, um, but it was sharp enough. Also for landscape shots, very good. But this lens is just sharper. So here's the brick wall test of the Kamlan 21F 1.8 and as you can see central sharpness is absolutely perfect already at open aperture. There is a fall off towards the borders and corners for sure but it's more linear. It doesn't have that peculiar mid zone dip of the TT Artisan. At f4 you do maybe see a hint of such a similar mid zone dip with the Kamlan but it's almost unnoticeable and at f5.6 the whole frame is basically perfect even for landscapes. And here is a comparison of the three lenses, Kamlan 21, the Zonlight 22 f1.8 and the TT Artisan 23. Here is f2, the Kamlan's the winner here. And here is f8. Now the Zonlai still just can't match the other two, whereas Kamlan and TT Artisan both at f8 are fantastic, crisp and clear detailed landscape lenses. Let's do the close focus test, huh? This, these flowers. They're a bit, it's a bit windy. I try my best. Super close for a wide angle lens. Sun stars and bokeh, however, are where this lens, uh, compared to the TT Artisan, uh, struggles a little bit. It's got an 11 bladed aperture, and uh, if you have an odd number of uh, aperture blades, then you get twice the amount of. Uh, aperture spikes you know so it's 22 spiked uh, sun stars and that's quite a lot they look a little bit fuzzy uh, also when you take night shots um, you see there's a little bit of light scattering around uh, bright uh, lamps and stuff like that the TT Artisan is a better controlled lens in that regard Maybe let's take a second look at these sun stars again, uh, because actually I have to admit that I prefer the version of the Zonlai 22 here. Um, nothing is perfect, there is a lot of light scatter, but I do like these uh, fine spikes on the sun stars. It doesn't look as harsh maybe as with the TT Artisan. So in this case, maybe a technical perfection it doesn't win. So personally for night photography I would uh, select the TT Artisan over this lens but uh, of course the looks of sun stars are also very um, subjective, it's a matter of taste. In terms of bokeh it's the same story, this lens is an f1.8 and the TT Artisan is f1.4 and if you compare the shots that I show you now uh, you clearly see the difference in bokeh. I also threw in some uh, bokeh shots of the Zonlai 22 f1.8. Uh, there the bokeh is very similar to this lens as expected, both uh, f1.8. But this lens makes a nicer, less fuzzy bokeh than the Zonlai. Uh, of these three lenses, the Zonlai sadly is just the worst, I have to say. It can't match uh, the other two. It can't match the TT Artisan or this Kamla. In these night bokeh shots I adjusted the camera position to ensure that the main subjects always the same size on these photos. And here I didn't do that, so you can clearly see how much wider the Kamlan 21 is, especially compared to the TT Artisan 23.
Okay, and here's uh, one last sharpness comparison between the three lenses. Uh, this landscape was shot uh, at f8, and you can see how the Zonlai can't match, uh, can't reach the quality of the Kamlan or TT Artisan. The Zonlai performs more like a, a kit zoom lens here, and the other two are really outstanding sharp. By the way, I didn't buy this lens. This lens was provided by a fellow visitor of my channel. Many thanks for your support. He sent me this lens so I can review it and then I will send it back. So time for the verdict. So this Kamlan lens uh, retails for around 150 euros new. Uh, of course you can shop around, maybe find them a little bit cheaper. That's the same price as the Zonlai 22 f 1.8 and the TT Artisan 23 f 1.4 is even cheaper at 120 euros. Uh, I didn't uh, check out the Zamyang 21 f 1.4 yet, which is another nice manual focus lens, but that one's more than 300 euros. It's a completely different price range. However, if you're looking for this 150 euro price range, I reckon the Kamlan is actually the sharpest option you've got. This lens is really very sharp. I was pretty amazed at the sharpness. Uh, landscapes at f f4 that look already much better than with any kit or zoom lens or anything. Um, at 5.6 is kind of perfect. Uh, even at open aperture is pretty sharp lens. So that's very good. It's sharper than the TT Artisan uh, at the same f-stop. However, in terms of aperture stars, in terms of bokeh blur, uh, and also in terms of clarity when you take night shots around uh, bright light sources, the TT Artisan actually is better than this lens. So I would call it a draw. It depends on what you're looking for. If you want a lens, an all rod lens with a nice background blur ability, I would definitely go for the TT Artisan. Also, the handling of the TT Artisan is nicer. Uh, the third lens, the Zonlai 22 f1.8, I already reviewed it last year, um, but by now these other two lenses are so much better that I would not uh, recommend the Zonlai anymore. So either go for the Kamlan or for the TT Artisan. So that's it for today. I hope you found this interesting, maybe even useful. If you did so, then please leave a like and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. It's a great, great, great support and I really appreciate that. Also hit the small bell button for notifications whenever I upload my next videos. And in case you've got any question or comment, just write something in the comment section below. I love to read all your comments and I will happily answer every single one of them. Yeah, uh, have a great time, uh, live long and prosper, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.